The family of Abdul Baha lived for decades amidst the severe privations of the prison city of Akka. It was a hard life for anyone, especially children. Many died, including the sons of Abdul Baha. Thus, there must have been happiness in the household on March 1st, 1897, when Abdul Baha's eldest daughter, Ziaya Hanun, and her husband Mirza Hadi Shirazi Afnan gave birth to their first son. The child was given the name Shogi, the one who yearns. Shogi Effendi was related to the Bab through his father, Mirza Hadi Shirazi, and to Bahala through his mother, Atsiri Yi Khanum, the eldest daughter of Abdu Baha. From the early years of his life, Shogi Effendi was greatly influenced by Abdu Baha who provided much of his initial training. Shoghi Effendi learned prayers from his grandfather Abdu Baha, who encouraged him to chant. It was also Abdu Baha who insisted that the appellation given to the child should be Shoghi. Effendi. Effendi signifies sir, rather than simply Shoghi, as a mark of respect towards him. As a young child, Shoghi Effendi was small, sensitive, and intensely active. His mother often had cause to worry over his health, but he grew up to have an iron constitution, which coupled with the phenomenal force of his nature and willpower, enabled him to overcome every obstacle in his path. Shoghi Effendi was reared in the house of Abdul Baha in Haifa and received the best education possible. He was originally educated at home with the other children in the household, and then attended a French Christian Brothers school in Haifa, and then boarding at another Catholic school in Beirut. Shoghi Effendi later attended the Syrian Protestant College later known as the American University of Beirut for his final years of high school and first years of university where he earned an arts degree in 1918. He reports being very unhappy in school and often returned on vacations to Haifa to spend time with Abdu Baha. As a young scholar, one of Shoghi Effendi's greatest interests was geography. He became a prolific maker of maps, a talent which he later used to chart the progress of the cause throughout the Western world. Transfer to the Syrian Protestant College later known as the American University of Beirut, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1918. During his studies, he dedicated himself to mastering English, adding this language to the Persian, Turkish, Arabic, and French, languages in which he was already fluent, so that he could translate the letters of Abdu Baha and serve as his secretary. After studying at the American University of Beirut, he later went to Balliol College, Oxford in England, where he matriculated in economics and social sciences, while still perfecting his translation skills. In the spring of 1920, Shoghi Effendi left Haifa for England, where he studied at Balliol College, Oxford. During his time at Oxford, he distinguished himself as a peerless scholar of English. His translations of the sacred writings from Persian and Arabic attain a standard which will never be surpassed. Shoghi Effendi had a great love for the English language, carrying with him a short notebook. He would note down words and sentences he liked. He was an avid fan of music and English literature, and enjoyed reading the King James Bible. His favorite book was the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Whilst a young man studying in Oxford, Shoghi Effendi was part of a debating society and enjoyed playing tennis. He was noted for speaking English in subtle received pronunciation. 
and Persian in an Isfahani dialect, inherited from his grandmother. Shoghi Effendi held Iranian nationality throughout his life and traveled on an Iranian passport, although he never visited Iran. Abdul Baha wrote, The axis of the oneness of the world of humanity is the power of the covenant and nothing else. For 29 years, Abdul Baha was the embodiment of his father's covenant, its appointed center, the branch of command which encompasses all existence. He was the focus of the unifying power of the cause. To the believers, Abdul Baha was the cause. Then suddenly, unexpectedly, he was gone. No words can describe the grief and despair which fell over the Baha'i world. Who would comfort them now? Who would unify and guide them? Who would lead them on the global mission for which Baha'u'llah had called? In his will and testament, Abdul Baha revealed the design for the administrative order and identified his twin successors, the Guardian and the Universal House of Justice. A 24-year-old student, still devastated by the passing of his grandfather, young Shoghi Effendi was appointed by Abdul Baha's will and testament the guardian of the cause of God and interpreter of the word of God. After some passport difficulties, he sailed from England on December 16th and arrived in Haifa on 29 December 1921, and a few days later opened Abdul Baha's will and testament, which was addressed to Shoghi Effendi. In the will, Shoghi Effendi found that he had been designated as the sign of God, the chosen branch, the guardian of the cause of God. He also learned that he had been designated as this when he was still a small child. As guardian, he was appointed as head of the religion, someone whom the Bihari had to look to for guidance. Abdul Baha made it clear that the election of the Universal House of Justice was the final step in building the framework of the administrative order. First, the cause must spread throughout the world. It must attract a foundation of believers to elect local and finally national spiritual assemblies. Using Abdul Baha's tablets of the divine plan as a blueprint for disseminating the cause and the will and testament as his authority to act, the guardian began the awesome task of raising up the worldwide administrative order. Martha Root and a band of traveling teachers and pioneers responding to the Master's call traveled throughout the world. Queen Marie of Romania became the first royal personage to declare her faith in Baha'u'llah. Baha'i endowments and properties were purchased throughout the world. Youth activities began in earnest, and Baha'i historic and holy sites were acquired. Completion of the Mother Temple of the West symbolized the obstacles facing the cause. Abdul Baha had personally laid the cornerstone during his visit to Chicago, and from the beginning, Shoghi Effendi was determined to see its completion. By 1937, eight national spiritual assemblies, pillars of the future Universal House of Justice, had been raised into position. Shoghi Effende's personal life was largely subordinate to his work as guardian of the religion. His lack of secretarial support with the mass of correspondence had left a pattern of hard work in Haifa, interspersed with occasional summer breaks to Europe in the early years often to the Swiss Alps. In 1929 and 1940 he also traveled through Africa from south to north.
In March 1937, Shoghi Effendi married Mary Maxwell entitled Rosilla Carnum, a Canadian. She was the only child of May Maxwell, a disciple of Abdu Baha, and William Sutherland Maxwell, a Canadian architect. The ceremony was a short, simple and quiet one. Very few knew the wedding was taking place in the house of Abdul Baha apart from the witnesses in a small group of residents of Haifa. Therefore the marriage came as a happy great surprise to the worldwide Bahara community. While Shoghi Effendi and Rosia Akhanum never had children, Rosia Akhanum became his constant companion and helpmate. In 1941, she became Shoghi Effendi's principal secretary in English. The time had come. The Guardian, armed with a small but devoted body of North American believers, began prosecution of the Master's divine plan. The first seven-year plan was launched. The opening scene, the Guardian wrote, of the first act of that superb drama whose theme is no less than the spiritual conquest of both the Eastern and Western Hemispheres. Within two years, however, the world was at war. The faith was under renewed attack and repression. The Guardian appealed to the believers in the West, dare greatly, Toil unremittingly, sacrifice worthily, endure radiantly, unflinchingly till very end. Their response was magnificent. By 1944, the number of Baha'i assemblies in North America had doubled. The costly exterior ornamentation of the Mother Temple was completed ahead of schedule and a strong Baha'i community was established in each of 20 Latin American republics. Inspired by their fellow believers in the West, 95 Persian families left their homes to settle in neighboring lands and join the growing ranks of pioneers. Led by the beloved Guardian, the worldwide body of believers had become God's victorious army of light. And in 1946, Shoghi Effendi, addressing the American Baha'i community, launched the second seven-year plan, followed by a call to the other national communities throughout the Baha'i world to adopt their own teaching plans with specific national goals. These plans would carry the healing influences of the faith to the war-ravaged, disillusioned peoples of Europe. They would consolidate the faith in the Americas and throughout the world, complete the temple, and erect three more pillars of the future Universal House of Justice, the National Assemblies of Canada, Central America, and South America. The European campaign fired the imagination of Baha'is all over the world. And despite severe economic hardships, once again, complete victory was won. Exhilarated by these exploits, the Guardian prepared his unbreachable army for the greatest single undertaking in the spiritual history of humanity. The Ten-Year Crusade, launched in 1953, he wrote, Let there be no mistake, the avowed, the primary aim of this spiritual crusade is none other than the conquest of the citadels of men's hearts. To the Baha'i world, even with its newfound sense of confidence, the list of goals must have seemed impossible. Erect two new temples, open 131 new territories, 
elect 48 new national assemblies, and reach millions of new souls, laying the foundation for the election of the first universal house of justice. Reflecting the importance of the plan, the Guardian announced four great conferences around the globe. Scores of pioneers volunteered at each conference. One hundred virgin territories were opened in the first nine months, and three-quarters of the goal countries occupied. Shoghi Effendi encouraged and mobilized his troops with a constant stream of letters and cables. His enormous body of written work, his books, his translations strengthened and deepened the believers. With the Guardian at the helm, nothing could stop God's army of light. In his lifetime, Shoghi Effendi translated into English many of the writings of the Bab, Baha'u'llah and Abdu Baha, including the Hidden Words in 1929, the Kitab Ikan in 1931, Gleanings in 1935 and Epistle to the Son of the Wolf in 1941. He also translated such historical texts as the Dawnbreakers. His significance is not just that of a translator, but he was also the designated and authoritative interpreter of the Bihara writings. His translations therefore are a guideline for all future translations of the Bihara writings. There vast majority of his writings were in the style of letters with Baha'is from all parts of the globe. These letters, of which 17,500 have been collected thus far and are believed to number of 30,000, ranged from routine correspondence regarding the affairs of Baha'is around the world to lengthy letters to the Baha'is of the world addressing specific themes. Some of his longer letters include World Order of Bahala, Regarding the Nature of Bahá'u Administration, Advent of Divine Justice, Regarding Teaching the Religion, and Promised Day has come regarding Bahá'u'lláh's letters to world leaders. Other letters include his statements on Bahá'u beliefs, history, morality, principles, administration and law. He also wrote obituaries of some distinguished Baha'is. Many of his letters to individuals and assemblies have been compiled into several books which stand out as significant sources of literature for Baha'is around the world. The only actual book he ever wrote was God Passes By in 1944 to commemorate the centennial anniversary of the religion. The book, which is in English, is an interpretive history of the first century of the Baby and Bahá'í faiths. A shorter Persian language version was also written. During his leadership the Bahá'í religion developed into a global faith. From the time of appointment until his death, the Bahá'í faith grew from 100,000 to 400,000 members, and the countries in which Bahá'ís had representation went from 35 to 250. In the 1950s he also continued building the Bahá'í administration, establishing in 1951 the International Bahá'í Council to act as a precursor to the Universal House of Justice as well as appointing 32 living hands of the cause, Baharis who achieved a distinguished rank in service to the religion and whose main function was to propagate and protect the religion. In Shoghi Effendi's final message to the Bihara world, dated October 1957, he named the hands of the cause of God, the chief stewards of Bahá'u'lláh's embryonic world commonwealth. Then suddenly, without warning, dark clouds of crisis covered the horizon. On the fourth day of November, in 1957, from the world center came the tragic news. Shoghi Effendi, the beloved guardian, had passed peacefully into the Abha Kingdom. 
Shoghi Effendi's death came unexpectedly in London, on the 4th of November 1957, as he was travelling to Britain and caught the Asian flu, during the pandemic which killed 2 million worldwide, and he is buried there in New Southgate Cemetery. The Guardian was gone. The ten-year crusade was only half finished. And the Master's other successor, the Universal House of Justice, had not yet emerged. In this darkest moment, it was the limitless resources of the Covenant that sustained, unified, and empowered the believers to forge ahead. The hands of the cause of God, raised up by Shoghi Effendi as the chief stewards of the faith, led the Baha'i world in carrying out his global plan. take the telephone from me because I was just sobbing. I believe it's a lie. Enemies of the faith are spreading the news that the garden has passed away. We were, I must confess, in a terrible shape. We knew that Shoghi Effendi had no children. The Baha'i community, they were so accustomed to having the guardian around and his guidance that they could not think of how things will be without him. After the passing of the guardian, uh, Amatul Baharuhi Khanum called on the hands to come together to Haifa. And their first job was to find out if there was a will and testament. They appointed nine members amongst them to check the office of the guardian and Dr. Varga was one of the nine. The hands went into Shoghi Effendi's study, to his office. And Amatul Baha <coughs> delivered the keys of the safe and everything and asked that you are free to go everywhere and investigate if you can find a will and testament. And I remember maybe two or three hours we were in the about that. And the other hands were waiting in Bahti. They broke the seals, they opened the uh, safety box. We looked everywhere, everywhere. We didn't find anything. Shoghi Effendi was the head of the faith. He was the infallible interpreter of Baha'i holy writings. There was no house of justice yet, and there was no guardian. And this was a very, very dangerous moment for the Baha'i community. Now, this was the job of the hands of the cause to steer the Baha'i world at this moment in this situation which happened so suddenly and so unexpectedly. I think the thing that has come across to me from that period was their trust in the Covenant and their absolute knowledge that the Covenant would see the faith through this period. In 1963, at the 100th anniversary of Baha'u'llah's declaration, the election of the first Universal House of Justice took place 
in the house of Abdul Baha in Haifa, Israel. At the moment of the election, the hands did something which was unique. The men and women who had control of an international religious community asked the electors not to vote for them. Which means what? Turning over the authority to this body to be elected, of which they would not be members, which they would serve, which would have authority over them. And I do remember um, Adib saying that uh, he felt that when the uh, tellers came out to make the announcement of the members of the first Universal House of Justice, he said, There was a palpable sigh of relief from the hands of the cross of God. They had carried the faith to this moment, and this was the moment then when that responsibility for them had been fulfilled, and the new institution, the Universal House of Justice, came into being. until her death on January 19, 2000. The hand of the cause ro The Erkanum traveled to over 185 countries and territories working with the world's several million Baharis. She especially encouraged members of indigenous peoples to participate in the global Bahara community. She wrote several books including The Priceless Pearl, which is a biography of the beloved guardian Shoghi Effendi.